you know, and really try to get Callista down early, then it's going to be really good. But flipping it around right here, this mid lane, it's going to be really difficult right now for Lionheart to do any kind of damage on this Ziggs. He has the bouncing bombs. He's able to farm safely. And, you know, again, it's going to be the same strategy for him as it was in the last game. Farm up, outscale the Ari, and really just try to bring that utility and that control mage uh, in the bot lane. But it looks like Salty Reese wants some blood right here. Yeah, level 2 Leon Illusion. Very, very scary. However, does manage to find the Zenith Blade onto the Callista. Exhaust goes down right away. This could be a kill going out super, super early. That's a flash burn immediately. That level 2 went in favor of the all-in comp. However, Hype slowly ticking away. Should be able to make it out alive. This isn't over yet. They're still looking for stuff. However, Salty Reese gets the hook onto Music. Gosu, however, a little too low on health to really follow that up. Everybody's going to survive so far. Yeah, I mean, that was a very crazy team fight. It started off with Salty Reese making the engagement and ASIC Music just flipping the script around and, you know, showing the prowess of that level 2 all-in that a Lucy and Leona can handle. We've got Boyo coming down right here. There is a, the, sorry, the Flash and the Heal are down on This Isn't Gosu. If they push this lane up any further right here, then this is going to be a victory right here. Well, that was a very, very big hook to dodge. I feel like that could have gone really, really badly. However, in the mid lane, we see Prytania saying, uh-oh, jungler's bottom, but this jungler's here to visit me. Forced to flash out of there. Summoner's burned on both sides. Yeah, I mean, that was, again, a really good gank. And, you know, we saw the last game that both of these junglers were really trying to... Um, really trying to push their advantage with their presence. And that is really going to be what sets the pace early because... Um, if this Vi decides to go do it, is it actually, it looks like Lamptor's going to get some good poke off right here in this top lane against Skeletor. Yeah, Lamptor's showing why exactly he's a Wukong made My Little Pony, forced to turn tail, say, hey, 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 I'm going away. Look how low Hype is in the bot lane. Uh-oh, yeah. look how low he is. Might go even lower. Gosu chasing in. Renstack's going to finally finish him off. First blood goes to Gosu. They're still looking for more of a music. Going to pop that Eclipse, going to make it away. Yeah, I mean, that right there was just a mispositioning from Mr. Hype, you know, he had the heal, and I think he was using that as a crutch to be a little bit overly aggressive, but when you've got the lockdown that Salty Reese can crank out there, and the, again, the Ren stacks, and it's just not going to prove any kind of uh, happiness for you, but back to what I was saying on these junglers, you know, Sayers Peregrine, as we said and we um, have stated before, that... He is really trying to show some early aggression. He's really trying to, you know, move around the map and show some early gank pressure. He goes back, he buys a Stealth Ward and the Stalker's Blade, so you know he's going to be trying to get into ganks. But this Nunu going, getting his blue buff right here, if he's wanting to do anything, as we all know, Nunu isn't the greatest at ganking unless you just want to see a laugh fest. Uh oh, like uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, music. Oh my gosh, finally makes it out. No, final auto attack does finish him off. Hype trying to avenge his fallen teammate by dashing in into Thresh. However, those minions do a lot of damage pre-6, so I don't think he's going to want to chase that. Alexa just let Leona die. Uh, that is going to be huge right here for This Isn't Gosu. You know, most Callistas these days are rushing that Bloodthirster just so they can survive that early game, and that's exactly what is going to happen with This Isn't Gosu. He goes back, he buys a five, six-minute BF Sword. That is going to just, you know, negate any kind of all-in pressure that a Leona Lucian lane has, and it's really going to propel him forward. You know, we saw this in the last game of how aggressive Salty Reese's Thresh is, and it's really paying off for them right now. You know, he's getting the Ignite, so he's got the aggressive combat spell, and he's using it to his advantage. He gets his AD carry to a 2 0 lead, and, you know, with the BF Sword, they're going to be able to crank a whole lot more havoc. And that was really interesting because I feel like ASEC Music could have gotten out of that alive. Got, got hooked, got flayed, managed to make it back under tower, but somehow elected to go back in with the Zenith play. So, little bit overestimating just how much. I mean, Leona does hurt early on, but not that much. Our Cyclone on the top lane. Skeleton forced to Onslaught of Shadows defensively. Lamter showing exactly how comfortable he is on the monkey. No monkeying around there. Uh, meanwhile, we've got the little bit of roam coming out here by Salty Reese. It's going to get spotted out by this pink ward. A great defensive pink ward right there in favor as ASIC Music actually goes to engage. Yeah, ASIC Music caught behind front lines once again. Salty Reese going to bring in Lionheart. Gets tagged by the charm. This Leon is not getting away. Tries to flash. Satchel charge just in time, but the Spear Rush should be able to finish this up. Vi picks up that kill. Megan for no death bomb. Not enough to clean up anything else. 3 0 lead for TDM so far. Yes, you know, that's going to be a dead support right here for HIA. That's going to force 
the red side to go for this dragon. They've got the pink ward. They've got all the vision that they want. That's going to be an easy seven and a half minute dragon right now. And, you know, we're talking about how Boyo's Nunu really wants to try to control these objectives early. But, you know, when your team is dying, then that's not going to help. The Ren goes down first dragon of the game, going over to TDM and really, really putting them in a good spot this game already. This scary mid game that we talked about so much in the pregame and the analysis is getting Getting it very, very quickly. High probably trying to get them there a little bit quicker. Ghostu putting that BF sword to use. One red rips it out of Lucian. That is 4-0 in the first eight minutes of the game. Yeah, this game is getting out of hand really quickly. If there's something you don't want to do and there's something you want to try to avoid, it's getting a Callista fed because we all know how great she is when she gets those items. And, you know, it, it kind of gets undervalued, but, you know, they're starting to put Callista in this hyper carry role just because, you know, a lot of the meta right now is really feeling towards, excuse me, is really feeling towards um, these team fight oriented AD carries, and that's exactly what a Callista can do. You know, she's got the positioning to dance around a team fight. She's got the red to, you know, create a little bit of disengage or burst if she so chooses. And if she gets fed, then that's all, that's all she wrote, folks. And it's really going to come down to uh, HIA right now to lock them down. They've got the potential with the Wukong dive. They've got the potential with the Mega Inferno Bomb coming out of Pritania. But if they don't stop this Kalista, then things aren't going to bode well for the rest of the game. A lot of credit going to Salty Reese as well, hitting all the hooks that he needs to in the river skirmish and all of the bot lane kills. This guy is hitting hooks and plays exactly when he needs to. Putting that level 5 mastery to use, that's another hook. Hype, oh my gosh, look at that health bar melt. He's trying to flash away, but I don't think they're going to let him go that easy. He's trying to dance around with the passive, but that is 4 kills early on. While in the top lane, they're going at it once again. At least they got 1 kill on the board for them, but ASEC Music has a lot of stacks in him right now. Goes to trying to dive it, not quite enough damage. When one person fights, everybody fights. Lionheart going into Britannia, chasing them into the own jungle, but the minefield going to discourage him from chasing any further. So while these teams showed a lot of apprehension and showed how nervous they were in the first game, they just cannot wait to kill each other in game two. Yeah, when it rains, it pours, Josh, and that's exactly what's happening in this game right now. You know, you've got almost a three, oh, sorry, almost a 4K gold differential already right off the bat in favor of TDM right now. You know, they're taking the morale booster that they got from game one, and they're putting it to good use here for game two. They're getting a lead. They understand that they can be aggressive, and they're really trying to exploit any kind of motivational weakness that HIA has, and they are putting them to the test and backing them against the wall. How, how must you feel if you're this bot lane staring at a Callista who's 4-0 in the first 10 minutes? Everybody looking at their swing saying, uh, guys, what happened? But Salty Reese, Thresh God, maybe we have another one. Mad Life, step aside. Assault and Battery gonna kill the Snowman. One more auto attack does finish it off. Lamter, however, the only one with gold trying to put that to use, but Peregrine's gonna flash away. However, Lionheart still looking for more. Lamter gets caught by the charm. Red Rover, Red Rover. Not going to send anybody over, though. Yeah, you know, again, a really good roaming support right here coming out of Salty Reese. He opts to go for the mobility boost early, so he knows that he wants to move around. He knows he can hit the hooks and make plays. And, you know, when you have a, uh, a hook oriented skill shot champion in the Thresh. If you're hitting those hooks, as it looks like Skeletor is going to go down, but it looks like Lamter might actually want some blood here. Lamter looking for blood in the top lane. However, electing to back up did burn the... No, still has the ultimate available without the safety of the tower. Makes that Hecarim just a little bit scarier. Async Muse, oh my gosh. How many hooks is this guy hitting? If I got a mystery skin for every single hook that Salty Reese has hit so far, I'd have a lot of mystery skins. Mystery skins for all right now. And you know, exactly, he's you know single-handedly carrying the spot right now. Sitting at 0 and 6. He gets the play. He's doing a really good job. <coughs> Excuse me. He's doing a really good job at really moving everything around um, and setting things up for his team. Right. You know, the pings come out as Lionheart's trying to roam down to see something they see. I'm not sure that they're going to want to stay right now because if they do, there's a lot of dive potential coming out of the, uh, of TDM right here. It looks like they get they get spotted out. Lionheart does have the Spirit Rush available, so a Really, really crazy yellow play still on the table. Looks like they're electing to back up out of there. Ziggs, however, taking this opportunity to say, hey, Ari's gone? All right, free farm. I'm going to push this out. Like you said, Ziggs, very, very good at pushing towers, given that his passive empowers his auto attacks. But Salty Reese looking for some rats in the mid lane. 
Takes the lantern in, gets the play. Britannia trying to get out through the defense of the minefield, but that is a whole lot of burst coming out of that sexy foxy lady. Whoa, he does trade one though with the Mega Inferno Bomb. Yeah, I mean, that was really good right there. That's exactly what he wanted. You know, it is really difficult as it looks like Skeletor actually is going to fight with Lamter. Yeah, Lamter almost out of mana. Cyclone, however, going to discourage the horse from going in any further. No more horse play for you, Skeletor. No, but back to this mid lane right here. That was a really good job by Pritania to, you know, pick up a kill, drops the Mega in front of him, hits two, and, you know, that was a little bit of miscoordination right here on TDM. You know, Lionheart and Salty Reese both, you know, wanted this, but I think Salty Reese wanted a little bit more right there. You know, gets the flash box, um, but does it right in the middle, so it actually doesn't end up hitting Pritania um, for enough right there, and Lionheart loses his life as a result. Dragon's up in 30 seconds right here. This is probably going to be the next fight, but, you know, at this point in the game, I'm not really sure that this is a fight that, uh, that sorry, that this is a fight that HIA really wants to try to do. Then again, we said that last game, and then HIA just went in and went crazy, but boy, oh my gosh, Salty Reese putting on a hook clinic. Absolute zero, forced to be popped defensively. That was a beautiful solar flare, enabling them to get out safely, but Peregrine just gonna dive into the back lane. Follow up in time? No, there is, and Salty Reese looking for more blood. Ghost on the back lane, nobody's looking at him. Bloodthirster seal, too strong for me. Nice work, Boyle, saying, whoa, whoa, I'm out of here. Onslaught of Shadows, however, my little pony says, hey, 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 you go away. Yeah, that's a two for one um, in favor of uh, TDM right here. And even though their jungler is down, the jungler is down as well for HIA. And when you have someone like a five year old one, yawning in these casts lately. Um, when you have a 5-0 and 1 Callista right here, this isn't something that you want to battle. This isn't something that you want to try to contest right here. A great calling out to try to get something, but the rend is enough to do the job right there. Second Dragon going over to TDM, and they're further and further pushing this advantage. I'm really happy that they're electing to go absolutely crazy in game two. I know a lot of the viewers in the stream were like, why are these guys playing so carefully? Like, why aren't they like trying to kill each other all the time? But it seems like they finally managed to shake that up, say, all right, guys, not what we practice. We practice fighting. We practice really, really strong skirmishing mid-game comps. They're putting that to use. Oh, Salty yeah, Reese, I he mean, lost his 100% kill participation. I mean, still, 0-0-8 zero, zero, and eight with a 5-0 and 180 carry is not something or is something that you must and surely be proud of right now. You know, he's doing a fantastic job. But no, you know, you look at some differentials from the first and second game right here. You know, vision control on both sides was something that, you know, they kind of needed to work on. You take a look at red side vision right here. They have all kinds of wards out right now. And, you know, even with a double sight stone in favor of HIA, they're still out warding them. And that goes to show that Stormview, you know, he understood that his team won. He understood that his team played well. But this being, you know, a learning-based environment, he's always trying to get his team to improve. And that's exactly what is happening right now with this increase in vision control. And when they're, you know, trying to do this and trying to go around, this extra amount of vision control has allowed them to be more aggressive and you really try to push their advantages even more. And this is exactly why we wanted to present it in a best of two series, because a lot of times in League of Legends, there can be things that just go wrong. Maybe you get caught off off guard by something you didn't explain. Blamter, however, catching this Vi off guard. <laughs> Peregrine's saying, hey, I think I can kill you. Saying, no, I can't. Forced to flash out of there. Yeah, I mean, Blamter's trying to do what he can. He is ahead right here. Um, of it, but it looks like Lionheart actually gonna try to get something. Yeah, flash out of the way of the charm, but it doesn't look like this guy's gonna survive. Snowball! Slowing Lionheart down just a bit, but that is a Yordle on the menu. Ari eating it up. Yeah, you know, Flash, the fancy Flash is around to try to do something as Mr. Hype does a great job at finally dodging um, the first miss of the game, I think, for Salty Reese right there, but that's gonna be bought out or turret going down, extending their lead to 5.2k gold right now. You know, it didn't become their game for the taking until about 40 minutes last game, but we're 16 minutes in, and they're abusing every little mistake that HIA is making. TDM showing their prowess and showing it well. It's tricky when you have a champion like Nunu who's so vision-focused, who's so objective-focused, but you guys are so far behind that. You're... You don't. You can't really put that advantage to use. Skeletor, however, finding the monkey in the top lane. Onslaught of Shadows. Lamter. The ignite is ticking. One more cleave should do it. Kyle. So blah 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 blah. Skeletor 420. Blazing the monkey.
Yeah, I, I mean, he, it was a great, you know, cycle of skills right there. Um, that goes to show, you know, that even though he did fantastic on Wukong, that's not the only champion he can play. Um, he has evened it out in farm. He does have a kill and an assist up on Lamter right now. Skeletor doing a great job at holding his own in this top lane versus a monkey main. Taking a look at the vision on the map so far, like we said, red team just all over it, invading the jungle, trying to clear out pings in the enemy jungle at this point in the game as well, saying, hey, you can't, you're not going to see anywhere where we're going. It's like Hector yeah, you also know, taking one, a frog. One interesting twist that we're seeing from game one to game two is, you know, we were, we were focusing, or not we, but sorry, TM was focusing as it looks like AC Music's actually Holy out right moly, here. that was an across the wall hook and charm and ASIC Music Harbor trying to get out of there with the Zenith Blade, but God, grabs onto probably the worst person out there. Probably gonna go down here. That's one going down. Inferno Death Bomb doesn't finish off anybody. That's a TP coming in. Let's see if Lamter can do anything. Does have the ultimate available. He's looking for a Reese. One auto attack should do it though. Just dashes in with the Nimbus Strike, finishes off Thresh. Thresh finally giving up the first death of his life. You know, that was a great situation turned ill right there. A really good teleport by Lamter to come down and help out. But you, that is going to be to, you know, pretty much no avail at this point because Ari's still up. She's got the wave clear now with the Morellos and the needlessly large rod. You know, you don't have Dragon spawning for another minute and 30 seconds. And even though you've got some decent push potential with Mr. Hype and Pritania, they're not going to be able to do this. It looks like Skeletor is actually going to come in right here. Yeah, he's going to help out. It's just on a few seconds off cooldown, but I anticipate as soon as that comes up, this guy is going to look for it. That Nunu is very, very low. Hype, also for getting really low on mana. When you're a caster AD like Lucian, you really need that mana pool to be able to skirt around. However, they're just going to clear the wave. Nothing quite happening just yet. Looks like the jungler and the support on their way over, trying to make something happen. Lamter still a little far away as well. No TP, so it looks like they're just going to survive with Dragon coming up with one minute. Yeah, they started out a little bit more, and what I, what I was trying to mention earlier before they started skirmishing a little bit was, you know, we talked about earlier about how, you know, the changes in vision control uh, in favor of TDM right here, as opposed to what HIA is trying out. HIA, you know, really trying to get vision control uh, with this double sight star right here, but you look across the board, and, you know, you still have a much better dragon control from the side of TDM. Yes, you've got a lot of really good deep defensive wards on your bot side jungle from HIA, but you know, they don't have anything around the Baron pit right now. You know, they've got that little bush right above the red, uh, right above the red buff, but nothing else. As a pause is going to come up right now, um, we're going to take a quick status quo report on the way everything goes. What are you thinking right now, Josh? I'm thinking right now that I'm having a lot of fun watching these two teams go at it. In the game before, we mentioned over and over again how these teams didn't really really push their edges to their to their fullest potential but given that excuse me tdm managed to get out to an early lead especially with like 2.5k ahead gold on Callista, they're really making sure to use that extra power from their items to take these skirmishes because they know they're going to win it they're not afraid to go in the jungle because they know nunu they can't really what's a nunu going to do against you when you eat a thresh hook to the face and a vi assault and battery to the face like there's nothing they can do so they're playing it super super well however lamter has disconnected looks like that's the only way to get rid of this guy yeah, I mean, um, it looks like he's having a little bit of lag issues right now, so um, hopefully we'll get him back in the game really soon. But, you know, looking across the board at the items and everything else, it looks like Mr. Hype's actually going to go away and reload himself too. Um, you know, we're really seeing a snowball right now. You know, it's not something that we would like to see. You know, we want to see a really close game and everything. But, you know, from the crazy good amount of hooks that Thresh is throwing out from, you know, the pretty good cycle of skills that Hecarim's able to throw out as well, you're starting to see a snowball from these carries, you know. They do only have four deaths, but at the same time, all of their kills are in all the right places. They've got three kills and two assists on their Ari. They've got five kills on this Callista right now. She's almost completed the rune and hurricane and once she gets that done then that's going to be a huge power spike for tdm right here and you know you look across the board at what else they have for power spikes you know hia is really in a place of struggle right now ziggs clearly um going for the zonias as he's got the pieces of the seekers arm guard you don't have a 
Infinity Edge finished yet on Lucian, so that's a power spike that they need to happen. And Wukong is just, you know, kind of trying to get damage. He has the potential to burst somebody down, but he doesn't have the potential without an Ignite ticking to take down the lifesteal amount that This Isn't Ghost 2 has on her Callista. And so, you know, looking across everything and really trying to, you know, analyze how it's going, this right here is TDM's game for the taking. And unless they start to falter step, then they're going to take away this 2-0 victory. Hopefully they continue this snowball on so we can really see how a team can come together, utilize their team comp and their advantage to their fullest, given that this is an environment where everybody comes together to learn to play to their best of their ability. We do have all players reconnected. The pause should be resuming. There we go. We're going to bring the league screen back up for you guys. Play resuming in one second. Dragon coming up in 15. No shortage of action is going to be found. Yeah, you know, um, there is a dragon up in 10 seconds right here. Uh, and they're just, HIA is just not in a position. We've got all five of them waiting in a bush right now. They know the dragon has spawned. They know it's going to happen. It doesn't look like they're going to stay. They're actually going to go for this dragon. I'm not sure if this is a fight that HIA wants to pick right now. I mean, aside from a miracle, new new flash zoom, which that dragon went down so fast. I couldn't even finish my sentence. Yeah, I, I mean, you've got a crazy amount of damage. You've got a smite consume on a Nunu, but you've got a rend on a fed Callista right now. So, you know, it really doesn't even itself out. They're going to push in this mid lane right here. If they want to try to stay in this game, HI is going to have to defend this tower. They're going to do just that. Pritania, even though he's behind right now um, on Lionheart's Ari, he's still doing a really good job as a Ziggs to just clear the waves and really try to stall things out. And that's what they're going to have to do. Because, you know, if you look across, they need to get some power spikes. They need Ziggs to get some more AP. They need this Infinity, Infinity Edge, which just got finished on Lucian, to get done. If they have any desire to come back into this, they're going to need to get this vision control. They're going to need to try to get picks, and they're going to need to try to force the issue when the rest of the team just is there. Yeah, and HI definitely have the champions and the skill sets and to be able to get those picks that are really, really useful. While Leona really losing out on the fact that she wasn't able to get a few more items to make her even tankier. She still has all that CC in her kit to make all that possible. Yeah, I mean, she's got the potential to do as it looks like Salty Reese is going to go godworthy again. Yeah, this isn't really much of a fight to cast when the Kalissa just unloads a whole quiver of spears into you and just rips them out. That's six kills in a row. Yeah, she's doing crazy work as Lionheart actually flashes in. Yeah, these guys really trying to push their edge. Flashes in, but misses the charm. That's going to be a summoner burned by hubris, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, that was a little bit of overaggression and kind of, you know, what they like to call in basketball a heat check. You know, you try to see what you can pull off and see if it works out for you. In this case, it didn't work out because the charm was missed. But, you know, all in all, really good job because she got a lot of good free poke off on Pritania right there. He's going to have the blue buff. He's going to be able to clear the waves out. But, you know, meanwhile, you've got Salty Reason. This isn't Ghostu pushing, but it looks like Lamper wants to try to even the score. Yeah, Ghostu probably going to die here for the first time in the game. That was a beautiful solar frame. No! The heal and the lantern manages to finish them off. This Thresh doing everything he can to keep his ADC alive. Callista manages to make it away while My Little Pony saying, Oh, you guys aren't here anymore? I guess I'll run away too. While the rest of them, the mid laner and the jungler, trying to take down the mid tier too, but it's not going to go down quite just yet. Yeah. Right, Tania forced to use the Mega Infernal Bomb to clear the minion wave. You know, to again, try to stall out a little bit more. Um, that was a great job by Salturis to disengage out of that fight. You know, he's really doing a good job of protecting Lady Carry and ensuring that not only does she stay alive, but she stays ahead. And that's going to prove, you know, towards their victory right here. You have the mid lane going down in favor of TDM right now. They've got a good amount of pressure across the board. But, you know, if you look at everything else, you've got some pretty good defensive wards right here in favor of HIA. They've got a top wave pushing out, and it's really going to come down, again, to them getting these picks and them to get their carries ramped up because they just can't afford to fight 5v5 right now. Um, I want to try to see, you know, with a 7k gold or almost 8k gold advantage, I want to see what EDM does next, you know. They have the ability to siege if they can get the minion wave, but there's a lot of clear coming out for HIA. And so maybe, just maybe, if they get the vision control, if they get the prioritization correct, they might be able to sneak a Baron in here at 24 minutes. And even with the wave, uh, the wave clear that Ziggs offers, that Wukong Lucian offer, 
if Salty Reese keeps hitting these hooks under the tower, I mean, that wave player isn't going to matter when he's just going to jump in. Callista, Ari, Vi is going to delete you in one go. I'm excited to see how this game is going to pan out because right now, while it looks like TDM really starting to run away with it, HIA, like you said, still have the equipment in, the, in order to rebuild this house. Oh, one yeah, more auto. They've... There you go. He, she got it with the Q. Um, but no, you're right. And you know, another difficulty that HIA is going to have to worry about is, yes, they've got some good amount of disengage, but they're really going to have to work on their damage because they have to get to this isn't Gosu. Because what is he doing? He's doing what a lot amount of, of a lot of Kalistas are doing these days when they get ahead. They're going for the double life steal build. So she's already got the Vamp Scepter on top of the Bloodthirster, the Brutalizer, not the Brutalizer, sorry, the Bilgewater Cutlass gonna be coming out soon, opting to go towards that good old Bork, but it looks like Boyo wants some uh, wants some fun. Yeah, he went in really deep. That's all for like was a big one to miss. Peregrine's diving into the back line, picks up one onto the Nuno. Looks like Lambda Halberd trying to get to the back line. Gosu's still staying alive though. This salty Reese is doing a godlike job on his thresh, keeping his carries alive. Skeletor trying to zone out Lucian. Lucian is nowhere near this fight. He's trying to find damage, but this Hecarim completely zoning him out. Looks like he might pay for it with his life. The ignite gets popped. Should be able to finish him off. Hecarim. Skeletor 420 picking up yet another one. That's 16 to 4. Salty Reese flashes in. Nothing though. Yeah, he tries to get something right there. Lamter sneaking around like he wants to try to, you know, uh, cut off Salty Reese's head, but it's not going to work when you got a Hecker protecting your body right here. That was a fantastic fight all around. You know, Boyo get caught, get, gets caught out a little bit. Um, he pops the full channel of the ultimate down, but he doesn't have enough AP. He doesn't have enough damage to really do anything. Gets deleted out of the fight immediately. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, HIA did what they were trying to do. You know, Lamter has a decent amount of damage. He dives to the back line, almost gets this and goes through. But what happens? Salty Reese to the rescue like he's done time and time again in this series so far. He's doing a fantastic job at really, you know, keeping her away right here. And that's going to be another kill in favor of Callista. She's going to go back. She's got 17 or sorry, 1,700 gold. She's going to be able to afford the Bilgewater Cutlass and some more attacks right now. This Kalissa is getting scarier and scarier as things go on. The discrepancy between the ADCs represents almost half of the gold deficit between TDM and HIA. That's scary, especially when power spikes are relative to the champion you're playing against. Lucian generally very, very easy in the mid game. But if Kalista can get this far ahead and just skip the mid game, like, what does it even matter? Yeah, it's not going to be much as Megalon Throne of Bomb is going to throw Skiffix low. Yeah, Boyo goes in, doesn't manage to get the steal, but it looks like Peregrine's acknowledging that he's probably going to go. Goes into the back lane, Salty Reese trying to peel away. Ziggs finally picks someone. Hype gets tagged by a charm. That's going to be huge. He's probably going to go down. Goes to Joe's legendary. Nice work, Boyo. Trying to get the absolute zero off, but not enough. Music is the next one on the menu. Charm finishes him off. Pritania saying, uh-oh, everybody's dead. Probably time for me to run away. So they didn't get the men. That's the fourth dragon. Yeah, I mean, 27 minutes at four dragons. I feel like we're watching Urgot was an inside job at this point right now with this objective prioritization. It's absolutely fantastic. A double kill in favor of this isn't Gosu. 9-0-3, up almost 60 farm right here uh, on Mr. Hype, and he's just wreaking havoc across the board. Fourth dragon goes down, three for one in favor of or sorry, three for one in favor of TDM. They get the dragon, they're pushing around. They're gonna steal a blue buff right here. Barret is next on the menu. I mean, what can you do when you're at HIA and everything is getting taken away from you? It's like, please, sir, can I have some more? But the guy just like takes the entire pot of oatmeal, eats it himself, saying, no, this tastes way too good. Not giving this up right now. 12K behind at 28 minutes into the game. ADCs, there is what, like four and a half thousand difference between them? Oh my god, it's... If you're HIA, you're just kind of scratching your head going, uh, what do we do now? Yeah, you're in a really tough spot right now, you know, even with war prioritization, the Salty Reese is actually going to get another hook. How often do you see a Thresh just going up to an ADC Lucian saying, you know what, dude, I'm not afraid of you, Skeletor comes in just in time. You know, Salty Reese probably going to survive a little longer, that's how scary this dude is right now. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. That's another tower down right now. And but back to what I was saying, you know, 
you're right. You're scratching your heads right here. You're down 14k gold. You're down four dragons. The ultimate, you know, Exodia fifth dragon is going to get finished where the game, you know, starts to go out of hand right here. You're only 28 minutes in right now, and the aggressor is TDM, and they are flipping the script on last game. You know, they didn't start to ramp up until the mid game and transitioning into the late game. This time, they got the vision control. You know, you, at the very beginning of last game, uh, Sags Peregrinus decides to go with an Oracle lens early. This game, he wants to get more vision. He goes for the greater stealth totem. He wants to crank out more wards. He wants to crank out more vision right now. And it, it's proven successful for him because with the extra amount of vision, they know where the jungler is. Skeletor did a really good job at keeping Lamter in check so he couldn't utilize the successful teleport. And that's allowed them to snowball this game forward and really push themselves in a very good spot this game. Dr or sorry, Baron is going to be up 14k gold down. I'm not sure you want to do something. Salty Reese getting a really good ward right there. It's going to get taken out by Boyo and the Oracle's Lens. You've got a misposition to Mr. Hype right now. The rend coming out right here of Callista is really going to be big. I'm not sure this is something they want to do. They nearly just need to give up this dragon. I mean, what's the odds of success here? Like 0% right now. Callista, you're not going to outsmite both the jungler and a Callista. Boyo going in. However, red team does secure it. That's going to pay for HIA. HIA trying to do what they can to salvage it, but they're just getting absolutely shredded. That's three players going down almost immediately. ADC shows up, but that's just too late. Wow, that was a beautiful play coming out. Zig's getting locked down. Barrier, not enough. This guy's gonna go down. Bandage just to trade one, though, but that is five for one. They give up Baron on top of that. They're just looking for more, more, and more. That was the that was the nail in the coffin right there, Josh. You know, HIA tried to go in. It was a really good multi-mega Inferno bomb. But Mr. Hype shows up a little bit too late to the fight and gets immediately bursted down by the Spirit Rush on Lionheart. This ain't goes to, you know, danced around the fight, did everything he needed to do, wasn't even in a, he wasn't even close to a spot um, to dying that entire fight. That's going to result in an inhib in the mid lane right here. This game is an absolute stomp right here in favor of TDM. They're doing everything that they did last game earlier. They're taking objectives, they're prioritizing the vision control, and they are showing that they can adapt game one, from game one to game two. They came out strong, now they're coming out even stronger. This is a fantastic match to see. And if you guys need any more proof to see just how Learning Fives works, it is so, so cool, like we said, to be able to watch such a huge change in gameplay just between games. And for those of you who are constantly asking in chat, yo, how do we get signed up in this? How do I get involved? We have mods all over the chat linking the Google Docs form to let you, so let you guys sign up for the next round of Learning Fives. These teams have only been together for about a month, and our full-length program is going to run the span of eight weeks. Imagine the progress you can make as a player and as a teammate by playing together for two months straight. And we saw, we heard these coaches talk about it a lot in the pregame, just how much these guys like each other. Vi goes in, this Zig's gonna get deleted. Let's just wait for it to happen. Wow, that was, whoa. Oh. What do you even say in this situation? What can HIA do against this? Lamter goes in with the Cyclone, but he's just looking to be the next on the menu. Salty Reese goes fishing once again, hitting all of these hooks that he needs to hype. Really showing that you need gold as an AD carry to be effective. This should be game right here, BC. Yeah, that's going to be 30 second death timers on the top and mid laner right here. Dominating coming out from Lionheart right here. This is going to be game. The Baron buff is going to make the push a lot easier as well as the Super Minions. GG well plays come out for both teams. This is going to be a 2-0 series take in favor of TDM. Coming out stronger than last game, coming out stronger than ever, showing that they can adapt, showing that they can, you know, build on what they did and do even better at the very beginning. GG's to both teams. That's game right there, bud. Yeah, we're going to throw it to a quick break for just about one minute. We're going to bring the coaches in here, do our final post-game analysis. Guys, stay tuned, hang out. This is where everybody gets to do some learning. I told you we'd be back really soon. We have the coaches in here. TDM manages to take that NA series 2-0 in the end. We're going to have the coaches just break down exactly what their thoughts were about the game. So, 
I'm going to throw it to the victory coach for Soren Rue. Your team manages to come out with a hot 2-0. Like, what do you have to say about your what do you have to say about your team? Like, are you proud? Are you like super excited? I I mean, I bet you're stoked. Oh yeah, I think they did really well this game. Things were generally a lot cleaner than they went the last game and they had the confidence really coming from the earlier game. They made a lot more aggressive plays. Maybe a bit too aggressive sometimes, but definitely very, very confident plays. And I was honestly a little surprised that our bot lane did so well, but I'm very happy to see they did as well as they did because, as I said kind of before the games we played, I have players on my team that can definitely hard carry, and they kind of all hard carried to a large extent, so... I was very happy to see how well they did. Now, I know both coaches talked about just how emotional and momentum-based their players can be. Hie, that first game, a lot closer than the second. What do you think really, like, at what point do you think your team just kind of, because it really felt like there was a moment in game two where everybody just kind of said, we're probably not going to win this, and it, communication seemed to fall apart. I wasn't listening, but that's kind of what it, the gameplay really pointed to. Yeah. On my team, like you said, uh, we have some emotional players, so their emotions can get the best of them, unfortunately. And as their coach, someone who's been listening in on their comms for like 15 to 20 games, I can tell you just about what the comms were like. It was something like one player would uh, start to do poorly and make uh, calls that aren't optimal. And then one person who's not on tilt would try to make the right call. And then there would be a split decision between the team with who to listen to. And then we make a, a half-assed decision for whatever objective was called. And nothing gets done. So almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy in that you said that was something that you were really, really worried about your team exhibiting. How do you think that these... Uh, these players really need to address that. This is just like a chemistry issue. It might be one of those things where like maybe these five players just don't click. Or do you think that with time, like if you were to spend another four weeks with them, you could really turn that around? I definitely have faith in this roster. I know that they each have a great amount of individual talent. It's just as a coach, uh, I need to wean them off of uh, individual habits like... Um, making tilt to decision making, you know, like if you're on tilt, just stick to giving out information instead of making calls. Say things that literally cannot be wrong. Like, oh, this person has an IE now. Uh, and then the person who's not on tilt will make the call. Okay, now we shouldn't be fighting bot lane. Really good point that you bring up. A lot of players really overlooking the importance of the emotional metagame as well but it's also awesome to see coaches being able to self-reflect identify in what spots they could have done better as a leader but then again in game two we discussed a lot about how in game one both teams seem really hesitant to really push their edges but it seemed like for the beginning of the match for game two rather both teams really really looked like they were turning things around like how do you think about the way your team played out the beginning of game two in the series uh, the beginning of the game really wasn't how I planned it out to be. It was supposed to be revolving around everyone playing safe, uh, letting the Nunu do his thing, control vision, do what Nunu does best. But unfortunately, uh, lanes just started to lose on their own before the Nunu could even do anything. So our plan kind of fell apart from there, and I feel like no one really knew what to do after the Nunu plan failed. I see. But over the course, while this was a best of two series that happened towards the end of your team's time together, what's something that you were really, really happy to see your team develop over time? Definitely to see uh, the emergence of our shot caller, Boyo. I feel like sometimes I can be a bit of a micromanager in scrims and uh, just casual ranked 5v5s. I feel like I can micromanage them a bit too hard telling them what plays to for Boyo might already be obvious. He's just letting me say it. So it it's really comforting for me to see that Boyo can take charge of a team and do a lot of the similar calls that I would have called myself if I was in the game. 
Awesome to hear. So I'm going to throw it back to you. What's something that you were really, really happy to see your players who obviously a bit more of a happy and upbeat end game interview for you? But what's something like just as players in general, you were happy to see them develop over the past month? Well, as I said before, the main thing that stood out to me when I first met them was that they had a really good and positive attitude, and they were really very good at working together and supporting each other. But the main thing that they kind of lacked wasn't really an aspect of skill, but it was just they lacked kind of a general direction. They really needed to have an idea of what to do, because once they had a goal in mind of kind of learning exactly how to play the game just as a team, then... They usually could do things pretty well once they were given that direction because their ability to support each other is very, very good. And as I said before, pretty much every player on my team has the capability to carry this game out. So they all really did well kind of individually and as a team. Do you think your team is one that will probably stay together and play ranked fives together for a while? Or do you anticipate them kind of breaking up, going their separate ways? Uh, well, kind of independently of me, they've already talked about staying together f quite a ways beyond the initial meeting. And I mean, four weeks is not a very long time, but these guys have already really gotten together um, and gotten along very well. And so, the, obviously, the comms were probably a bit more positive since we were winning this game. But even when we're losing, there isn't a lot of... Um, negative attitude or kind of frustration they tend to still support each other even when they have rough games and so i think that both winning and losing they can really work together well easy we're gonna end it on you while your team seem to struggle a little bit more in game two do you think that they're gonna opt to stick together maybe work through some of these communication and shot calling problems what do you think is gonna happen these are a bunch of people who I can see already have friendships forming amongst them. It's not just the only bond they share is around the same team. So I feel like beyond the game, they're already friends. So they might already be in talks right now about carrying on into the eight-week summer program. Who knows? And that's really, really awesome to hear. We brought this program together with the intention of helping players get better at team-based League of Legends. But seeing that I mean, this is a community-grown program, and we're just fostering so much, like, love and camaraderie amongst all the members of Summoner School. Like, we're a massive subreddit. I think we have above, like, 65,000 subscribers. So the fact that we were able to bring these 30 or so teams together to continue playing on for the foreseeable future, I think is really, really cool. Coaches, thank you so much for giving your input to both of the teams that participated in our scrims tonight. Thank you so much. It was great to watch and for us to learn a little bit more about the Learning Fives program. We're going to kick it off to our conclusion so you can see just everybody who's been working on this. This is a volunteer, community-driven project where all of us do this as a work of passion. So with that said, we're going to sign off, guys. I was Piscator Josh, your host. I had with me today both Dune Bogey and BC Jumpman as casters alongside. We're going to throw it to our conclusion. Have a good night, guys. Thank you so much. When you are ready, I, I, I want that syrup. I want it badly. I want it in my mouth. When you are ready, I, I, I want that syrup. I, I want that syrup. In my mouth.
If you're 